Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about acute hepatic failure, acute liver failure. This is also called as fulminant liver disease. Liver function decreases rapidly due to a illness in the liver and patient develops hepatic encephalopathy and raised PTINR in less than 26 weeks. So, hepatic patient should have liver disease, patient should develop hepatic encephalopathy and INR should be more than 1.5 in less than 26 we can call it as acute hepatic failure. Hepatic encephalopathy has got various gradings, grade 1 altered sleep rhythm, grade 2 onwards patient develops flapping tremors, grade 3 patient will have flapping tremors with altered behavior, grade 4 patient is having coma. So, patient develops liver disease, hepatic encephalopathy and function of the liver is also altered that is INR more than 1.5 or patient develops clinically significant bleeding due to coagulopathy. All occurs less than 26 weeks then we can call it as acute hepatic failure. There are other some few words that is hyperacute. If all these things develops in less than one week we can call it as hyperacute hepatic failure. Fulminant, fulminant hepatic failure patient develops hepatic encephalopathy within 8 weeks. So, it, these things normally occurs due to toxins especially paracetamol toxicity or ratol poisoning, rat poison induced hepatic failure or any other poison induced hepatic failure that means toxic hepatitis that develops, develops very fast within one week patient develops hepatic encephalopathy. Acute hepatic failure characterized by moderate to severe coagulopathy, mild to moderate intracranial hypertension leading to hepatic encephalopathy, jaundice all occurs in 1 to 4 weeks. Acute hepatitis due to various etiologies can develop acute liver failure. Subacute hepatic failure, mild coagulopathy, jaundice, progressive encephalopathy in 4 to 12 weeks and it is mainly occurring in other types of drug toxicity like ATT induced drug hepatitis or any other drug induced hepatitis. There are various other causes can present with acute hepatitis like hepatitis B or D, herpes virus infection, ischemic hepatitis, Bacchiari syndrome, Wilson disease, poisoning due to mushrooms, herbs, autoimmune hepatitis, help syndrome. So many other diseases also can present with acute hepatitis. Sometimes chronic hepatitis can present with acute on chronic uh, disease that is also possible. Like a patient who is having chronic hepatitis due to viral hepatitis, suddenly it can aggravate or sometimes alcohol in that patient can present with uh, induce a hepatitis who is having already chronic hepatitis. Drug induced hepatitis very commonly seen in you, you have already uh, noticed that paracetamol is one of the drug, but very high dose of paracetamol toxicity can present with fulminant hepatic failure. Other drugs commonly used drugs are diclofenac that is an NSAIDE, sulfamethoxazole, trimethorphan, cotramaxole, INH, rifampicin, pyrocinamide, disulfiram, ibuprofen is an NSAIDE, amoxicillin, erythromycin. So, so many drugs can produce uh, hepatitis in that most important in our country is anti-tubercular drugs. But whereas in western countries most common drug which produces hepatitis is paracetamol and NSAIDs because of uh, their uh, very common use in rheumatological conditions. But in India anti-tubercular drugs produces more hepatitis than any other drugs. 
In drug induced hepatitis, one classical finding is SGPT is more elevated more than SGOT. Whereas in alcoholic hepatitis, SGOT is elevated more than SGPT. So, that can be observed in many patients. Drug induced hepatitis like paracetamol, we routinely treat with N acetylcysteine. This can be done in other types of hepatitis also. Some patients may require liver transplantation. Now, you can see other important cause for hepatitis is acute hepatitis is viral hepatitis, especially hepatitis A, B, C, and E. Fulminant hepatitis incidence in hepatitis A is sorry, A is 0.1 percent, B is 0.1 to 1 percent, hepatitis C is 0.1 percent, hepatitis D is 5 to 20 percent, and hepatitis E is very, very important in pregnant ladies. 10 to 20 percent in pregnant ladies, it can present with permanent hepatitis. So, we should be very careful when we are treating hepatitis E in pregnant ladies. <coughs> Now you can see the SGOT, SGPT levels in various liver diseases. Ischemic or toxic hepatitis has got maximum SGOT, SGPT elevation in short span of time that will be in 10,000. So the value will be in between 1000 to 10,000. Acute viral hepatitis, it will be less than 10,000. Alcoholic hepatitis, it is in hundreds. Chronic hepatitis, it is in hundreds. Cirrhosis, it is very less because uh, it is a chronic process and normal is 10 to 40. So, if more than 10,000 or more than 1,000, very few conditions are there. So, ischemic hepatitis, viral hepatitis, toxic hepatitis. Severe alcohol hepatitis also so can sometimes produce uh, SGOT, SGPT elevation in thousands. Remember, in all other hepatitis, SGPT is elevated more than SGOT. But in alcoholic liver disease, SGOT is mostly elevated more than SGPT. That not always, but in many patients, you can observe this phenomenon. This is a chart which will tell you what are the uh, evaluation uh, steps to be done in patients who is having acute hepatitis. I am not going to the details of that. But remember, all patients who is having S, uh, Acute hepatitis, bilirubin will be elevated. Direct hyperbilirubinemia can be there. SGOT, SGPT will be elevated in thousands. And if the patient develops liver necrosis, this will start drastically, uh, that will start down, downwards. Like uh, suddenly, SGOT, SGPT from 10,000, 20,000, if it is dropping to 4,000, 3,000, 2,000, like that, we should be very careful. That shows liver necrosis and liver cells are not able to produce any SGOT or SGPT. So, you should be very careful in that situation. Now, serum ammonia is one important investigation we do in acute hepatitis. Uh, but the problem with serum ammonia is serum ammonia elevates, uh, in, routinely elevates in all types of hepatic encephalopathy, but its level does not correlate with the severity of hepatic encephalopathy. So, that is very, very important. It is elevated in hepatic encephalopathy, that is all, but we cannot tell the level will correlate with the severity. So, if uh, sometimes uh, mild hepatic encephalopathy patient will have a very high value of ammonia. So, levels will not correlate. Now, there is a criteria called as King's College criteria. There is mainly for classifying this patient whether they are fit for transplant or not. But in India, unfortunately, we will not be able to select all the patients who come under this criteria for uh, liver transplantation. So, that is not possible in our country because of uh, uh, availability of donor or financial issues. But there is a criteria which will tell you that this patient may require liver transplantation. That criteria is King's College criteria for liver transplantation in acute liver injury. pH less than 7.3, that is in paracetamol, paracetamol toxicity. pH less than 7.3, lactate more than 3.5 at 8 hours and more than 3 at 12 hours. Creatine 3.4 milligram per deciliter, INR 
more than 6.5 encephalopathy grade 3 to 4 non paracetamol uh, liver injury inr more than 6.5 with inr more following more than uh, pt more than 50 seconds bilirubin more than 17.5 jaundice for more than 7 days age 10 to 40 etiology drug reaction or an unknown etiology of liver failure now icu monitoring is very very important for all patients who develops acute liver injury in emergency room we always take care of patients airway breathing circulation because airway problem can have in a patient who is having hepatic coma he can aspirate so airway should be protected and uh, circulation problem can occur because some patients will have severe sepsis septicemia shock so circulation part should be taken care then other investigations are PTINR PTINR will be elevated in most of the acute liver injury that is a marker which can be used uh, to identify the patients who are requiring liver transplantation so in acute liver injury in a center where liver transplantation is possible uh, we don't prefer uh, to correct the INR in acute liver injury with FFP because we will be masking uh, the criteria if we give FFP INR will improve uh, so we are masking the uh, criteria by giving FFP so in a patient who, who may require uh, liver transplant we will not try FFP we should not try but if the patient selected for uh, liver transplantation then we can correct to the bleeding parameters uh, according to the transplant surgeon's uh, suggestions APTT can be elevated sometimes in sepsis <coughs> fibrinogen ca level can be low in DIC electrolyte abnormalities like hyponatremia hypokalemia all should be corrected because all these things can produce altered behavior and aggravation of encephalopathy creatine hepatorenal syndrome can occur in some patients toxicology screening for all drug toxicity or poison toxicity should be done then monitor other parameters in the patient slight elevation of head and around 30 degrees is required to reduce the intracranial tension mannitol can be tried hyperventilation with uh, mechanical ventilation can be tried all can be tried to reduce the intracranial pressure and like we discussed hydration should be corrected uh, oxygenation should be corrected airway breathing circulation all parts should be taken care in our icu now many patients who can have seizures especially those who are taking alcohol seizure should be controlled in all patients who is having hepatic encephalopathy ideal drug is uh, you can use uh, benzodiazepine small doses short acting benzodiazepines like uh, can be tried initially but levetiracetam is the ideal drug which can be used in patients who is having seizures because seizure, seizure itself is going to increase intracranial tension it, uh, it, it, it uh, affects the oxygenation in patients so we can start levetiracetam in a dose of 1 gram loading dose 500 milligram BD or TID dose depending on the severity phenytoin and phenobarbitol are not good choices in liver injury NSL cysteine is tried in paracetamol poisoning nowadays uh, many guidelines have come NSL cysteine can be can also be tried in other acute liver injuries like drug induced hepatitis or viral hepatitis all these things we can try NSL cysteine within with varying uh, results uh, if if it is not paracetamol toxicity some other toxicity unknown toxicity we can give 150 milligram per kg body weight dose can be started if it is paracetamol toxicity there is different pro protocol for NSL cysteine that should be followed otherwise you can give uh, either 600 milligram IV TID in your ICU lactose is one drug which can reduce the pH of the intestine it can reduce the bacterial growth in the intestine which can reduce the ammonia production in the intestine by reducing the bacteria by reducing the bacteria which produces ammonia it can be given orally or it can be given as lactose retention enema both uh, both can be tried in patient who is having hepatic encephalopathy now antibiotics can be given in patient who is having hepatic encephalopathy one of the important cause for uh, hepatic encephalopathy is infection 
especially in the abdomen, uh, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis or any other intra-abdominal infection. So, gram-negative coverage is required. So, to prevent hepatic encephalopathy, we have to give uh, non-absorbing antibiotic like rifaximin 550 milligram BD or if you are suspecting an infection, ceftriaxone, cefotaxim can be tried because gram-negative infection is the most common infection in patient who is having hepatic encephalopathy. Flumacinil is one drug which can, which is a uh, uh, benzodiazepine receptor antagonist that can be tried who is in coma, hepatic encephalopathy coma. Dose is 0 0.2 milligram IV over 15 seconds, then 0 0.2 milligram uh, every minute as needed up to 1 milligram total. That can be tried, but it is not a routine uh, guideline. Uh, routinely, we don't uh, give flumacin in all patients who is having hepatic encephalopathy. Corticosteroids are not used routinely in patients who is having hepatic encephalopathy, but drug induced hyper hypersensitivity that leading to hepatic uh, failure and hepatic encephalopathy, we can try corticosteroids or autoimmune uh, hep hepatitis with hepatic failure, we can try corticosteroids. So, that is not routinely recommended in all types of hepatitis. That depends on the uh, gastroenterologist preference we can start. Other things, uh, important things in uh, emergency room is we have to always take care of patients nutrition because high protein diet in the patients who is having hepatic encephalopathy can increase the problem in hepatic encephalopathy. So, protein restriction, especially animal protein restriction is very, very important. And many patients are in fluid overloaded state. So, in that condition, fluid control is required around 1 to 1.1 liter fluid restriction is required. Many patients with hepatic encephalopathy can have uh, water retention and uh, high, uh, that, that can be due to uh, high sodium in the blood. But the problem is a patient who is having um, ascites, falsely sodium can be low. Patient can have dilutional hyponatremia. So, that part should be taken care whether patient is having hypernatremia or hyponatremia, both should be corrected. Potassium should be corrected in all patients who is having hepatic encephalopathy because hypokalemia is one of the important trigger for hepatic encephalopathy. And bleeding tendencies, we already discussed that patient will have elevated PTNR bleeding tendency. Unless until it is a dare emergency, we should not try to correct the PTNR with FFP because uh, correction of INR in a patient who is, um, who is uh, requiring liver transplantation will mask the uh, INR and it will reduce the INR, it will normalize the INR. So, the criteria for transplantation will be uh, affecting. So, we will not be correcting INR in this case because um, the patient who is, re who is requiring uh, or under follow-up for liver transplantation, we will not over correct this problem. So, that also should be taken care. Thank you.